today, we got the RX 6000 XT announcement, but it seems incomplete. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Today, the main announcement was obviously that Radeon Anti-Lag now supports DX12 games, not just DX9 and DX11. And that's not it. The company added motion adaptive VRS support for DX12 too. Nobody cares, nerd. I'm kidding. Obviously, the Radeon RX 6700 XT was officially unveiled a couple of hours ago. It's priced at 479 US, or I'm guesstimating 650 to $700 Canadian. And it's currently the baby of AMD's RX 6000 lineup. Now, all we got during the presentation were AMD branded charts, which uh, we'll look at in a moment, but the reviews will be going live on March 17th, one day before the card becomes available for purchase. As the leaks predicted, it's Navi 22 based, it has 40 compute units, so 2560 stream processors, and in terms of clock speeds, the game clock is at a whopping 2424 megahertz. Then if we look at the memory, we can expect a good 12 gigabytes of GDDR6. Oh, and uh, TBP for the entire board sits at 200 and 30 watts. Strange, kind of high, but we'll look at that in a few. One thing that all of the leaks got wrong was the Infinity Cache. Everyone expected the 6700 XT to have half the Navi 21 Infinity Cache at 64 megabytes, but AMD pulled a fast one on us because it actually has 96 megabytes. The made by AMD version of the card will use an eight pin and a six pin power connector to deliver the 230 watts, which actually piqued my curiosity a little. This means that the 6700 XT will be more power hungry than the 3060, 3060 Ti, and 3070 Founders Edition. It's kind of crazy. Why would it be so power hungry? Well, first, the game clock. At 2424 megahertz, that's pretty damn high. Over 400 megahertz higher than the RX 6800 and 6900 XT, which brings me to what we think AMD is hiding on purpose and could be their smoking gun, the uh, boost clock. Now, this is just a prediction, so keep it with a grain of salt, but we looked at the difference between game and boost in the last three upper end Radeon XT GPUs, and after some basic math, discovered that the boost clock is usually about 12% higher than the game clock. If this is accurate, we could see the 6700 XT boost up to 2700 megahertz and beyond which is just insane for a reference clocked GPU. I don't know if you remember, but a couple of months ago, Igor's lab leaked the clock limit that AMD put in place in the VBIOS for Navi 22, so the 6700 XT, and that clock speed was 2950 megahertz. Also, at 230 watts, only 20 less than the 6800, it's odd that they removed a cooling fan, but cooling it shouldn't be a problem. It's about the same length as a 6800 series, it's a dual slot design. Performance-wise, AMD showed off 1440p benchmarks with smart access memory enabled, and it appears that the 6700 XT is going to be clearly better than an RTX 2080 Super, but slower than a 2080 Ti or a 3070. It's probably going to bounce and ping pong between the RTX 3060 Ti and RTX 3070 in most gaming workloads, specifically rasterization, because it's definitely going to be worse in ray tracing, but that's expected. Now, obviously these benchmarks were done using the API that gives them the best possible performance, so we will have to reserve judgment until the actual reviews come out from third parties. Connectivity-wise, it has three DisplayPorts 1.4, one HDMI 2.1, and no USB-C port. Personally, I think it's a bummer because all of the other cards have it. I know Nvidia removed it, but it's very useful. AMD didn't think that people would buy this level of card and use it for VR, but I use it as a USB connection for external storage or just high-speed devices. Shame on you, AMD. Now, the biggest question is whether you will even be able to get your hands on an RX 6700 XT. Thankfully, that possibility is looking somewhat better with this model. I guess. We all know that it's gonna sell out on the first day, but AMD is promising better stock levels than the RX 6800 series and weekly restocks at retailers. The MBA cards, as usual, will only be available on AMD.com. Oh, and last but not least, during the presentation, AMD also announced that the Ryzen 3000 processors will get support for smart access memory, so you can now have the best possible graphics performance, even on previous generation CPUs. I'm emphasizing CPU because that's as long as you have a 500 series motherboard. Artificial limits, that's dumb AMD. 
Anyways, guys, that's pretty much it for the catch up. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you want to talk about today's stories. As you can see, the, the llama is still there. Some of you commented about it, but yeah, it's still there. Uh, don't forget to click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care. I remember those days. We've been apart, but you always, you always, you always take it all away and put me through your crazy. Even if I wanted, I know that I shouldn't, but we always.